Greetings and welcome to Die Dragon, Di Di Dragon Die Presents the Grimstone Chronicles Season 2 Episode 14. I am your demon host Marty joined by the uh, full Ontario crew. How is everyone doing tonight? Let me make your mics hot and toasty because otherwise you are confused with the descriptor of said mic. Uh, Adam hmm. needs to be high, Omen needs to be lower. Let's see if I can reset these levels to where they were. How are you guys doing? Testing, one, two, three. Yep. Three, two, oh, one. I mean, yay! <laughs> yay! There we go. I'm here for game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been off for a couple weeks. Uh, Yo, Fox, what up, man? <clears throat> hey, Fox. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, traveler. <laughs> Do I do we have a pleasure? Mm. All right. Uh... Join us on our magical journey through imagination. <laughs> imagination. I want to watch Magic School Bus followed by Reading Rainbow, the LeVar Burton one. I think it's Reading Rainbow. Yeah, it's Reading Rainbow. Yeah, I want. I, I have this. I actually probably shouldn't because it's probably really bad. But I have good memories about no, like that time see a trip, slot. If you want to see a trippy show, I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube. Doctor Snuggles. <laughs> Dr. Snuggles <laughs> was a children's show I watched when I was like six. Watched it as an adult. I'm like, this should be a drinking game. This is so trippy right now. <laughs> so, so one movie that I didn't realize was really like Cthulhu-esque it was Howard the Duck. Apparently the end oh, boss in Howard the Duck is a big tentacle I monster. <laughs> so did, I, I, I watched it and the movie is so... So bad oh, it is until bad. you get to the end, and it's like, wait a sec, this is this is actually a Marvel. It's a Marvel, Marvel property. Yeah, it's a movie. Marvel movie. <laughs> it's a Marvel superhero movie. Yep. And the, the the graphics or the special effects for that monster is amazing. It's some of the best stop motion animation I've seen in film. Period. So it's on my list of you know when things quiet down and I finish all moving and I start picking away at you know it's a good one acquiring DVDs. That's on that's on my list. That and. I, I can't believe I don't own it, but The Highlander. <laughs> you don't own The Highlander? I don't own The Highlander. I don't. It's just, it's just, it, there could only be one. Apparently not my <laughs> apparently, apparently, that's, apparently I got it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not in my apartment. And I'm pretty sure they made a sequel to that. I'm pretty sure they, they made they've Highlander got like, 2 and 3 or something. Or they've yeah. Got, yeah. Yes, they've got at least three and they might have like a reboot. Thing you know the guy to say made... nothing of the TV series, which is as I recall, our worst. Our the worst guy season. that played Raiden, yes. was is the, the Highlander. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I think because it like, like we really like the way he looks with lightning. <laughs> 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 He's got a lightning face. All right, <laughs> nice. Uh, so, what have you guys been up to? What two weeks, man? What's going on? Uh, I. Uh... I worked the last six days, and they were shitty, to shitty shifts. So, <laughs> I've what? I've been working the last six days also. <laughs> My strongman log came, and the delivery guy is like, "What the hell is going on here?" He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you, I did <laughs> like deliver this. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much. The... It was it was awesome. It's here. I've got some bruises. I don't know if you can see. Oh, oh yeah, you can see them on your yeah. forearms. Yeah. Those are those are the bruises from racking the log, and it sort of it sits there a yeah. little bit. So I gotta I gotta put some like uh, I have to wrap my wrists. I didn't wrap them last session, but mm -hmm. I'm having lots of fun pushing. So that thing is two fifty. Uh, no, the log itself is one hundred and fifteen pounds, and then you oh, add weights light. to it. Oh, and then, yeah, and then you add weights to it, so it's it's two hundred something or so. Well, I, I I when I dorked myself, that was about two hundred or something. So but you're basically even... doing this with me. Well, no, it's over the head. You have to straighten. Oh, you're just doing this your shoulders. Oh, that's, okay. that's a bunch of non <laughs> well, non Nazi stuff. You have to get it over your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> All right, so Adam in his log. <laughs> Adam in his log. <laughs> Adam <laughs> playing with his log. All right. <laughs> Literally. Uh, <Ahmed>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ahmed has an extensive uh, PlayStation. Uh, game library has or had? and had <laughs> um yeah save your stuff to the playstation network daily because you never know when you're gonna get fucked <laughs> <laughs> i got fucked <laughs> That's all right. That, that kind of implies there was some intent behind it. I, I think you're 
your PlayStation just crapped out, maybe. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it Unless was. Unless one of your kids was like, life. "Screw you, Dad." I like the dist- I, I like the uh, uh, the distinction there. Um. <laughs> yeah, it was it was done randomly, I believe. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, random. Uh, you, you believe it was randomly? Yeah. yeah. Or was it? <laughs> no, randomly is over there going. Was... What did I do to his PlayStation? <laughs> <laughs> my side uh i have my oath ceremony to go to later this month i think it's on the 19th i will become a dual citizen and then uh the house closes on the 31st and my stuff goes to canada leaving me with a very spartan amount of furniture very minimal amount of furniture uh so and then i'll be in canada sometime in june (laughs) What I'd like the people not to think too hard about yep. is citizenship, buying a house in a different country. That, just don't don't think about it. Just, don't just, think about it too hard. <laughs> Here's my thing. Okay. Send my shit to another country. <laughs> <laughs> Was, he's just purging himself of the Canadian things. That's ah, what, yeah. I guess, yeah. Anyways, don't worry Canadian about it. stuff stays in Canada. It, it is it is a non-standard kind of uh, very specific series of events that will happen don't worry i yeah. will maintain residency and here in the states and i will uh become a citizen um yeah he's just gonna vacation with all our lakes and streams up here in canada that's it's effectively <laughs> what the plan is for the next 10 years yeah. <laughs> yep. it, it is uh uh spend time in northern ontario where it's actually more beautiful weather than in seattle during the summer and avoid the goddamn Canadian winters, and by winter I mean the eight-month period where it's yeah. not as nice as yeah, there were, no, no, <laughs> Not a year will go by where I'm dropping Marty off at the airport there, where I go, have a good trip. It's going to be fuck you, dude. Every, every year, fuck you. <laughs> you can come easy. <laughs> uh, you can come visit. Well, no. The, the travel right now is silly. Uh, yeah. Only for an extended visit would I go through all that quarantining and and nonsense. Yeah. But uh, we'll deal with that in June. And then work's been really busy and looking forward to getting back into a regular uh, rhythm so that, you know, it's prep game, prep game, prep game. <laughs> and that's your week. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we managed to do some prep last night. But not enough that I don't have to do prep tomorrow for Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm. yeah. Uh, why don't we do a recap what of what happened last game, which was a couple we weeks killed ago. everything with half the party. <laughs> oh, uh, it was real sketch a few points. <laughs> <laughs> when you have like damage and three ability scores, you're like, I, oh yeah, I, I just yeah. The last two games were Riven Roar and the Pack Lord. <laughs> Yeah. Thogrim, Brennos, Amadeus, and Agony continue their raid on Riven Roar Dungeon, facing its goblinoid and undead inhabitants while searching for captives from Brindle and the Stolen Relics. At the Riven Roar Ruins, a goblin shaman unleashes a horrible planar beast called the Pack Lord. Thogrim, Brennos, Amadeus, and Agony must contend with the beast while trying to keep the rescued captives safe. While in the Dungeon Ruins, the party finds an old map that shows the Red Hand's battle plans to move troops through the mountains to surround Overlook and invade the western Elsir Vale. Of course, that map is like a hundred years old plus, um, but curious that it's here in the hands of a self-styled hobgoblin warlord who had been um, uniting uh, disparate forces under the, under the banner of the Red Hand. Uh, you rescued some captives, got the relics, and then waited outside for a Barnabas and crew to reach them via carriage. And then I think you guys then hopped on the, on said carriage and then began your way back to Brindle. Yes. Yep. That e- um, on the way back to Brindle, um... So you're, you're, you've got the captives. Is there anything you want to say to the captives or interact with them in, at all? Um, well, we have the items that were taken from there. Um, 
uh, their museum. Yes. Do they know about that? Do they see us collect those or not? So I, I'm going to go off to the side and... Because uh, I don't so, know if that was part of our treasure. Oh, no, <laughs> we're going to divvy shit. Well, I, the, I, think, I think we were supposed to return those if we could. There is a list of them in under plot items in your Northern Treasure and Party Gear. Mm. It, it is good to note what you are doing with them. So that first evening, um, uh, you they, they don't seem to be con too concerned about the relics. Uh, what are you doing with them as you're packing up your treasure? Are you, keep, are you keeping them hidden, or are you just mixing them amongst the treasures, or are you letting them know that you've got them? No, that's none of their business what we're doing. So, let, let's mix them in with our treasure, but Barnabas will keep note of what belongs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. See, see if they'll give us more than that, what they're actually worth. <laughs> we're going to melt this down. No! <laughs> Uh, on the return journey, did you bring any of the NPC allies with you on on your way out here? Like uh, we brought the ranger. Girl. Yeah. Um, the silver-haired fellow there. Uh, Sildar is with you. Okay. Yeah. S Sildar seems to know. Um, hmm. He knows who Theron's father is, so he seems to <laughs> like look after the boy, at least like be be concerned with the boy. Uh, oh, someone has to. That priestess was doing a shit job. <laughs> she, she just goes into the into the iron coach and lays down with her conditions. Oh, does what? this look like a fucking hotel? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you force us to the map? Uh, yeah, I thought I already did. Brenos yeah. is trying Thanks. to gauge the child. Brenos feels the child. If his dad is dead. Him and the child's mother, if she survives, should be brought into the into the embrace of the of dwarvish rule and protection, and then they can live happily amongst the dwarves, where they'll be safe. Okay, so and you 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 know, Brenos, I I just for your own good, I would like to remind you about the um, conditions of your religious freedom. That is, he's not. Trying to turn them into... Do you not tell them anything about gods? What I think Brennish, Brennish is saying, Barnabas, is that there, the, if the father had died in protection of the city, the city needs to do something for the family, not just left like this. Yeah, that's not typically what human cities do, so don't get your hopes up. The boy yeah. needs to be taught. He needs father figure. That's what he needs. Is that going to be you? Because it'd be really fucking weird. I'm just telling yeah. you. Fuckham looks, Fuckham looks at you and is like, well, really? Like, you're the human, right? He, should be, enough, he enough should be brought home head. to his mother, says Silver. All a boy needs is discipline. Strong hand will keep him out of trouble. Well, just... that's, that's what a father is. It's a strong hand. He's still got a mum, maybe. Does his mum survive? Theron seems to be afraid of Amadeus <laughs> and backs me up. Amadeus tries yeah. to smile, it just comes off. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> what? Oh, where's the um? All right, your your wagon is filling up quickly as people yep. have shuffled inside. Yep. Um, oh, if we... fuck, I'm, I'm going right outside. <laughs> um, Part of his wiggles his way in. Okay, so the, the seats have all been taken inside the wagon. Hey, Barnabas, it's a question. If I put up a rope trick inside the wagon, will it move with the wagon? Uh, spell check DC 30. If I take one... Oh, no, that's next level. Yeah, uh... you're, you're, you're my portable encyclopedia. Google... <laughs> Siri, if I put up. <laughs> Actually, at this point, alright, Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, rope trick is sort of moving carriage. Is this carriage large enough? You think? Probably. Yeah, give it a shot. All right then. Uh, he's gonna, he's gonna pop a rope trick inside the okay, carriage. So you grab your eight or ten foot length rope and you kind of cast the spell. The rope goes. Ding! 
right to the metal top of the uh, uh, the carriage, and then the the opening, you see a flash, and the rope trick is there. The horses move carefully up, and the rope trick remains uh, affixed to the same spot on the ceiling of the of the carriage. So yeah, well excellent. Well, you know where you're gonna find me. <laughs> 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 All right, so there's a group in the rope trick somewhere. Uh, Thogram's climbing up into the rope trick. Fuck. Actually, um, fucking magic. Actually, he, <laughs> like... he, he 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 comes down. He comes down. He comes down. He's like, you know what? My cannons will take some time to prep if we ever need them. I'll stay out here. You lot can probably go up there. Probably safer. Less movement. You'd be able to rest more. I don't think I can climb that rope, says uh, Sir Tenyon. Uh, Brenos is going to give him a hand. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay, if you insist, you kind of have to shove him up into the space. And then you realize it's nice and cozy up here. It's neither cold nor warm. It's a bit bright, but it's not bumpy. And he he's fine with being up in the rope trick. Um, We're going to help Jalissa up the rope? She she actually yeah. she actually mouths the word thank you to you uh, and goes up into the rope trick. At this no, point in time, no. when the respected cleric disappears up in the rope trick, Adoncia says, "I'm not afraid." This is the uh, this is the this is a fresh day, right? Because it took yeah, him, like two days yeah, to get here. Yeah, this was the next morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Adoncia climbs up the rope and uh, he scampers up there. Um, and I guess the old ladies, uh, if Brennos, if you're lifting, yeah, Brennos is if Brennos will be is the old ladies that aren't like I'm a priestess. They're like I am old. We're the, gonna be a little more jealous, the boys, a little more dainty with them. The boy is saying everyone disappear up a rope. He's like, can I go up there? Yes, you can go up there. Okay, hey. the, the little kid, yeah, yeah. he struggles and gets up the rope on his own and and use your feet, lad. That's it. That's it. One over the other. That's right. Good job. Agony goes inside the wagon. Uh, so does Eamon. Slake is... <laughs> Amadeus is in there. Two Amadeus is on the map. <laughs> oh, do we? <laughs> they make you uncomfortable. <laughs> thogrim has got a, a bag of bowling in his hand. He looks at Barnabas. Huh? Huh? <laughs> no, thank you. Ah. I always wanted to see what would happen. But probably not with my own, you know? All those cannonballs might fly everywhere. We're bringing the people back to the town safe. That's the plan. That is the plan, yeah. Yeah, at, at uh, eight hours, he'll pull them, he'll ask them to come down and recast it again. Okay, so you take you take basically a break eight hours in and shuffle people around, and then yeah. you cast it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's going to... Go. <laughs> okay um i think it's a, a couple days back to uh um back to brindle um yeah it's you're at camp like a day outside of brindle and you notice certain you you catch certain you being uh, one of Adam's characters, uh, Sonny notices Sertanian rooting around some of your some of the treasures, uh, and he's like tugging at what looks like a piece of cloth. Uh, hello. Um. <laughs> he's very lucky it was that character. I think. <laughs> uh, this is one of the battle standards of those that stood bravely at at, at the battle against the Red Hand of Doom. Oh, uh, just try to get it loose. There's a big box on top of it <laughs> and other treasures. You should, be, you should be careful if it's. Ooh, it looks like it's magical. Um, hmm. What do you know of I, the standard? Well, uh, is, this is the, the, the battle standard of the side of light and good, of the Elsie of Ale and the, and the brave knights that stood against the Hobgoblin menace. What is it? He just needs so it, to be returned to, it, to the Hall of Great Valor. It belongs to those who stand against the Great Menace. Hmm? Yes, it belongs to the Hall of Great Valor to remind us of the Valor of the past. And what of the Valor of the present? It, it, what of it? Wouldn't it be useful presently doing something? 
it's as opposed to sitting there an old I battle mean... standard uh, it will remind us serve as an example it will do much good back in its place in the hall of great valor I will take a moment to, like, I'm going to identify this item. What does it do? All right, so uh, the battle standards don't have a shred of magic on them. They're old okay. pieces of cloth. The broken All shields right. may have once bore enchantment, but they've been broken for so long that such runes and magic have, ble have bleached from them. Okay. Uh, the clawed gauntlet still has magic on it. Okay, this is in the... Uh... Is it in the treasure sheet? Yep. Or look, is there look under plot items. Plot item, plot item. Oh, plot item. Uh, it might be d It's empty. Oh, there's two plot item sections. There's two plot item sections. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> that dastardly other plot item section. <laughs> <laughs> I will erase that empty plot item section. Maybe here. one of them is subplot items. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is the hope for plot. <laughs> the hope for plot. Okay. Uh, the claw gauntlet still has magic on it. It is a uh, magical gauntlet plus one that has the wounding um, characteristic in it. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. Um, uh, it also deals. It can deal. Um, bludgeoning or piercing or slashing. Bludgeoning or slashing. Sounds like an awesome It's thing. definitely <laughs> it's definitely a uh, um, uh, a hobgoblin item. Like it's this big yeah. nasty oh, left claw. It, super cool looking metal is all hell. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> cover I, I see it. I see it on Amadeus. Still has blood on it, and it's function. It's functional because it's magical. The dra the dragon crest helm is also magical. Uh, this thing uh, looks like a kind of like a silvery dragon, kind of like like. Your, your face is coming out of its jaws sort of thing, and mm -hmm. it's got um, uh, big wings, kind of like ear wings, uh, coming off to the side. It's a, maybe a little bit unwieldy, <laughs> um, uh, but its magical properties are... Mm. Um, a plus two two sacred bonus versus and I'll, I'll just write this down uh, now that you're identifying it so mm -hmm. plus one wounding gauntlet uh, bludgeoning or slashing damage and the dragon crested helm is a plus two sacred bonus versus uh Dragon breath weapons. Hmm. That would be very useful. Did the hobgoblins in the old times bring um, dragons to bear? Huh? Ah, this. Uh... The dragon crest helm uh, belonged to uh, a famous priest who fought in the battles, uh, who helped the forces of light stand against uh, the forces of darkness. Um, the priest's shrine is still in Brindle, although we haven't had a cleric of Bahamut in many years. Dragon. Yes. Was it a dragon man, dragon priest, or was it a man who worshipped dragon, dragon priest? Uh, I think it was some sort of mixing of human and dragon. <laughs> so I'm just kind of looking back. There's a in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we don't have an accurate depiction of him. I, I, I do believe the sword was his as well. And, and he, um, you found the sword, right? It was missing. The ceremonial sword? Uh, yeah, you see a, a beautiful platinum sword. It's like made out of the platinum. The non-functional one. Uh, well, you understand, like battle standards, a, a, a symbol can be more powerful than, than a, um, um, 
than an actual functional weapon. A priest can make a mighty warrior out of a uh, uh, out of a militiaman. Uh, mm. uh, magic is very mighty, and if you yes. symbolize your magic through such mundane accoutrements, then who am I to judge? It is a beautiful sword. You wouldn't want to use it in battle. You did find it, didn't you? And he's starting to root around in your stuff. Uh, you, you probably should stop that. All right. <laughs> who, who then next notices the two old men? <laughs> um, Ahmed. Let's see either Cog or... or Ahmed Thurgrim. Davis, that guy's getting a wedgie or a brain Cog, you, know you notice the two old men are, are talking and Sonny is failing to stop Sertanian from going through your, your, your party's loot. Save his life. Save his life. <laughs> oh, hello there. Oh, oh, you seem to be sticking your hands in things that might not belong to you. They don't belong to you either. I see the uh, well, helmet. I see the helmet. It's in there. All right, and it shall remain there, and um, you'll get it when you get back to the town. It's safest in there with all the other items. If you start tugging around, something might get damaged. I, I want we we can't go if we haven't found all that was taken, especially the dragon dragon crest helm and the, the sword. The sword is in here, no, isn't it? Everything inside of that place we took. We're we're not staying there. We're leaving. You think we would leave anything who, behind? Who is the lord of your your group? I heard you call yourselves the League of something. You don't want League of Extraordinary <laughs> Adventures. <laughs> they have blindness spells and deafness spells. This could be a very uncomfortable ride. <laughs> I, it's the same spell. Take, take, take my advice. We did not leave a stone unturned. Any magic items in that tomb are here. The, the ceremonial sword is not a magic item. Anything of value you would have taken. Trust me. It is a symbol. He looks back. He looks over his shoulder like, yeah. trust me, anything of value was taken. <laughs> All right, give me a diplomacy check. I'll let either Sunny or Cog take the lead. Uh, do you want oh, me to take the lead? Sunny, would you mind? Okay, so Cog, okay. you help. Oh. Because my, my next step is to make him blind. And then, no, sit in the chair. <laughs> and then if that doesn't work, we make him deaf and blind and gag him. And can... We all have, all right. have to return him. <laughs> da, da, da. Da, da. It's safer than letting Abadeus deal with it. Well, it's not less than five. Okay, so it's Cog a... doesn't help. I... I don't hinder. 35? Yeah. yeah. There, there will be an accounting, is what he says. He waggles a finger a little bit and then, then pulls it away when you give him a stern look. <laughs> We're only the collectors. We didn't lose it. Snarky. He's looking around like, we rescued him, right? <laughs> I, believe, I believe we did. I believe, I believe we did. We also intimidated him to make him shut up at that point in time. That yep. wears off. <laughs> Well, I don't I know if we... Sonny intimidated him. No, Sonny didn't intimidate him. <laughs> That's why he's but away it's... from the people that, that, yeah, that put exactly. him back in the, uh, in the, uh, the jail cell. <laughs> yeah, Mr. feels Sonny's frustration and comes over to him, like, look around and see what's going on. I know Miss Dress. If anyone's played Monster Hunter, there's a, a, a yuck, yuck. Yuck luck or yuck yuck monster, which is basically a big chicken with a big beak, and that's kind of what I imagine <laughs> and my companion is. Pretty much. Oh, you know, this <laughs> All right, so you you kind of resolve that, or at least push pause on the resolution of that until you return to Brindle. You return to Brindle. Um, things seem to be uh, slowly returning to normal. Goblins have not reattacked Brindle when you ride uh, when you ride into Brindle. Um, what business do you have here? Uh, the people who you've rescued are eager to return to their respective homes. Uh, Sildar offers to take uh, Theron to his mother. He 
notice that Brenos was kind to the boy and asks if Brenos wants to go with. Brenos wants to go with. Okay. Um, Barnabas should probably have some sort of. Um, do we, do we need do we need to bring them? Uh, this is on the side, not in front of other people. Yeah. Um, we're supposed to get, uh, you know, a reward for them. Uh, do we need to bring them to the town first, or are they all right to just, you know, disperse at the end? Uh, I'm sure they'll take there. our word for it. Brandis has uh, prayed to Clangadin for this journey and for that of glory and war. No, we don't want war. <laughs> oh, I don't know about you guys. I need to roll hit points. Yes. Well, we well, haven't leveled. I haven't yet. leveled, so I don't. Oh yeah. Roll oh, uh, sorry. I'm just tired. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like Barnabas is going to go collect reward. Yeah. Um, uh, most of the people, once you get them within the walls of the town, want to go to their homes or to their temples or places. Yeah, of Bar- Barnabas, Barnabas is confident that we'll get the reward for them. It's hard to make up people you, <laughs> you saved. Eventually that comes out. <laughs> yep. Um, are you. Uh, Sertanian seems to be lingering. Who? Adroncia says, I must return to my work. There are many potions to brew. Little does he realize that his host is... Okay, so so Thogram is is invisible and flying. (laughs) Because he wants to see the expression of his face. (laughs) (laughs) I gotta turn up. You're going to learn an illusion spell just to craft the illusion of his face to give it to him as a present. (laughs) (laughs) So, Uh, uh, Thogram, was that a joke? Are you actually following uh, Adronsius? Uh... (laughs) Um, He's going to... uh... Just FYI, the fact you're hesitating about this means... You're not probably. that good a person. <laughs> no. Uh, he, he, he hopes he can hear his cries, though. It's like, no! Like, All right. So uh, apparently... You, you, you're dreaming about it. Yeah, you, you've had past run-ins with Adronsius before, and you find him a little arrogant, and uh, you don't get along with him. Uh, it might e- I even described it as a frenemy apprentice of the same master. So um, there are evil thoughts that Throgrim... Uh, uh, malicious thoughts that Throgram pushes away. Malicious yeah. is a better word. Yeah. 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 Uh, Zerixa the crone seems to be waiting with Sertanian. Yes, yes, I know. And she, like, they're having some old, old person argument. Um. <laughs> old person argument. Oh, you're not oh, really they're bad. my chief. No, they're mine. <laughs> They, they they obviously know each other. Like like she yeah. was fidgeting at his at his call like at his uh, uh, at his shirt sleeve and trying to get him to do something. And He's apparently the cook he knows coming and... because the cook one would assume goes and spends a lot of time at the. Uh... Yeah, the cook was the apprentice cook to the main cook at the Brindle Keep, uh, Myrtala. Yeah. So she she departs immediately, probably for Brindle Keep where she lives. Um, okay, so Sertanian. Uh, uh, excuse me, Barnabas? Yes. You can, see, you can see him. He's summoned all of his bravery to confront you. <laughs> As a learned man, you must know that some of these items have much more value than their uh, weight in silver or the component metals. I do hope that you intend to return them. <laughs> Yes, of course we do, once we've negotiated the appropriate fee for their return. Are you headed to go see the Lord now? No, it's been a rather long trip. I think I will uh, get some sleep first. Things have been trying my patience as of late. The The road is rough. Yeah, it says a man in the fucking rope trick. I think I should go, while you relax, pay a visit to uh, the Lord Mayor. The Colonel will want to know that you've returned. Oh, good, good, you do that. Send him my regards. <laughs> the old woman seems to be fussing about something, and... Yes, I know! <laughs> 
she just follows him. So what do these broken shields look like? Uh, it looks like they've got, like, knightly heraldry on them. Okay, I think we're going to make them whole. <laughs> okay. I mean, they're broken. <laughs> they shouldn't be broken. One of the shields is a dwarvish shield <laughs> in style. One of them is a is a human shield and the other you're getting is a um an elven shield they kind of represent the factions that helped uh defend elsir vale against um uh against the enemies of okay i i uh, on this day i can do two okay so and sunny's, then i guess i could sunny's putting I can, I, well, I can, actually i could do on this day i could do all of them because i'll use a pearl of power to get the last one <laughs> Okay, you re-knit the shields and... Um... See what they look like? <laughs> oh, Sonny, you're going to make that old man very mad. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> they were broken. <laughs> then Sonny smiles. Yeah. Right, except for magic. <laughs> All right, now that they're put back together, Barnabas, it's pretty easy for you to ascertain, um, like, the family names of that that are on the heraldic devices. Okay, uh, with this knowledge, I guess knowledge and ability. Were any of them magical before they were destroyed? Excellent question. I'm caster level nine. And what ma what level of magic could you replace? Caster level four. What level would it be caster level five? <laughs> <laughs> So like, I think you did it a week one. too soon. <laughs> no. Caster level four, okay. Otherwise, I think I just bring it back to its masterwork state. Uh, the Elvis, the Elven shield, um, is a mithril uh, masterwork mithril heavy shield cool and you do know that it had magic on it cool see how the spell worked there's magic in there we just need to tease it out <laughs> <laughs> alright you tease away <laughs> <laughs> Uh, give me a knowledge arcana, Sonny. Okay. Uh, he's a dirty looks part of us. No helping. <laughs> yeah, I can do right. it. <laughs> Shut up, Polly. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. 20. <laughs> part of it's like, really? That's all you got? <laughs> it's elf. <laughs> <laughs> So the caster level's seven, so the DC is fifteen 14. plus caster level, so uh, the DC of understanding the item is twenty-two. So okay, you see the old man like, like trying to figure it out. Marcus, you can't help you. Like you know what it is. You know how to help him. <laughs> you know how to help oh, for him. Fuck <laughs> sake! All right, works out whatever it is. <laughs> so this shield is considered a celestial shield Ooh. it is a plus two blinding heavy steel shield that has no armor check penalty and no arcane spell failure Allo Ooh. allows the wielder to cast feather fall and has additional properties if they're also wearing celestial armor does that uh, not make it back? The, the, the magic has not been restored. You've just you've just stuck the two broken the several broken yeah. pieces back yeah. together. Um, yeah. The additional powers when you're wearing celestial armor is that you may command the armor to provide overland flight rather than fly once per day. Oh. At caster level, or do we know? Uh, probably seven. Seven. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So, uh, we need a scroll. I need a scroll. I need a library. The, 
the shield you thought because it was mithril that it was elven it's not elven it's so okay like celestial god it's stuff. it's uh, some it's something it's something else it's some um, knowledge planes for the metal maybe no it is mithril it's just it is, oh, it's... you assumed it was like oh it looked like an elven style because it's really light and you put mm -hmm. it back together and went oh no no that's something else okay uh, it, it is shaped like a dragon scale. Mm. Noted. I need a, I can fix this. I need a scroll or, or a library or a priest or a wizard or I can fix it. I, well, I can't fix it, but I could fix it. <laughs> right now I can't, but I could. <laughs> it's a thing I can do. Uh... Okay, so Very we're nice. we're gonna we're gonna call the one of the shields. I'm gonna put two. We call this the we're gonna call it the platinum shield. And then the other two noble shields, it is definitely a dwarven shield. Mm. So one is a um, dwarven tower shield that is masterwork. And one is a masterwork um, heavy dark wood shield. And then the heraldry, what is your knowledge local Elsir Vale or Knowledge Nobility, Mark? Uh, knowledge Nobility will be my best friend. I know uh, how he did that study. He doesn't know any of that stuff. <laughs> he yes. doesn't know where he is. Or knowledge he Nobility, <laughs> if he takes 10, gets a 36 plus hang on, 1d6. So, 37. Uh, the, the Dwarvish Heraldic device on the shield is Clan Anvil. This actually belongs to Slyke. Mm. What? Uh, it, but this is yours. I mean, by Dwarven rights, I would assume. Um, uh, Why? Uh, it's a dwarven shield, I can see that. He picks it up. Yeah, that's in Sydney and there, it's your clan. Clan Anvil, right? Oh, it's Anvil Brow. Well, isn't Anvil Brow an offshoot of Clan Anvil? That's what you said. That's what you told me. Yeah, uh, I know I started you like a question. It's actually a statement. <laughs> oh. Alright. He picks up the shield, he's looking at it. Just carries it away. Uh. Well, uh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it magical? <laughs> he uh, no, 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 not yet, all right? It's... We've got some talking to do before we start smashing things. It's... I don't believe that one's magical. It's just a nice shield. Yeah, it's, 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 it's some of their fucking nostalgia shit, all right? Air, then. He just stuffs it back into Barnabas. Barnabas's hands. The Masterwork Heavy Darkwood Shield has, um, like, some weird runes on it. Do you think these are more, like, stylish runes? Uh, Knowledge Local Elsir Vale. Uh, Sunny, it actually says words in Druidic. Now listen to me, young man. Druid had this shield. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> DC, uh, he gets a 30 if he takes 10 on an un... <laughs> okay. So, in Druidic, it just says F over and over and over. Or a ranger who knew a druid. <laughs> Somebody was trying to couple with the druid or something. <laughs> uh, Barnabas, you're like, you're pretty sure the Keepers of F is the name of the local druid circle in Elsir Vale. Uh, there's a druid circle here. They, the keepers of bed. Mysterious insights of the weave. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Ethan Druidic will say is one of the power sigils. Like it, 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 it's not the most powerful sigil, but it, it definitely is um, one of the power sigils in the in the Druidic language. Okay. Did I mention I could use a library? Uh, they've mm -hmm. got a couple here. They've got um, they've got a magical school and you know a regular school. Both should have libraries. Mm. Do they have an actual just library library here, or is it just at the schools? Uh, they may have some smaller libraries uh, at the Brindle Academy, and the Brindle College of Magic probably has a library, and you think maybe even the Cathedral of the Five Phase God might have a small collection of books. Uh, and what is your knowledge local, Elsir Vale? 30, after I take 10. Um, you know that there is a much more... There's a much more grand library in Overlook. Overlook, however, should have a much grander library than this, what we find here. Hmm. I can fix that shield if I have a library. Well, let's hide it then, otherwise these little yokels are going to want it back. <laughs> Okay, uh, what are you doing with the two battle standards? They don't have any magic. They're a little bit torn and ripped. They could be, uh, they could be mended. Uh, I, they're not obviously broken. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I you, mean... you've you've put together three shields and found, I don't know, like, yeah, these uh, things have history, like... and then you found like, hey, this one's weird and was a magic item. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing with the ceremonial platinum sword? Uh, that's. It's a work of art. Yeah, Barnabas it, is it, like it, this is a ten thousand gold piece piece of art. Does it do anything though? No, it just looks pretty. Who's who's picking it up at this point while you're looking at it? Uh, Sonny would have picked it up. He can't like yeah. swing it at anybody. He's like picked it up, but he's sort of like. But like this, just kind of. <laughs> okay. He's pretending it's like a staff or a wand. It's like, hey. Sunny, Sunny has know. the Sunny has the vaguest of feelings that the thing is important, but doesn't know why, and it doesn't radiate magic. So it's it kind of. It's platinum. Platinum is relatively soft. Yes. We're gonna take a bit of. We're gonna take a knife. We're gonna <laughs> just sort of. <laughs> Why don't we try to move it with mage hand? <laughs> just, just sort of, just sort of scratch it a little bit, see if it, if it nicks up on the pommel. Okay. I mean, a, a bunch of hobbies had it, so obviously they did. Okay, there, there, <laughs> there is, there is a nick that that uh, um, there's like a, a shaving of metal that appears from the mundane knife that you're using. There is nary a mark upon the platinum blade. Yeah, you are. Master geographer. Um, this might be an odd. No, come on. I did my job. I did my job. I did my job. I did my job. the did my job. I know why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a bunch of clucking. <laughs> Thogrim, as you're like packing up your shit, there's a bunch of clucking. Barnabas is standing there with, with Sunny with stupid grins on their faces. Birds are clucking. <laughs> Seems to be the problem. Oh, no, no problem. No problem. No, 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 no problem. What we have here? No, no, we have nothing. <laughs> we have not a thing. There's an axe in his hand. <laughs> no, no, nope. nope. so he puts his head behind his back. He's got his head. He's got his head. You're a you're a crafter, right? 
I, yes, the finest in the land. Are you able to fabricate things? Yes. Good. <laughs> does anyway, they're a bunch of morons. <laughs> <laughs> he, looks, he looks at the metal. I'm so we're not gonna... sure where we're going to find mm. something like this, but I can polish it quite nice. It's coins. It's just made of coins. So... Why don't you provide it? Then? So he's going to borrow us coins. <laughs> <laughs> or actually, coins. just um, you could use a very cheap metal on the inside, as long as it has the same density. But you need the layering to be correct. Uh, possibly, possibly two castings of it would do. Two castings? Yeah, two castings. We'd have to make sure that the the weight is correct, and the distribution of the weight, in case anyone's knows it enough to swing it. Uh, I can work on that. That's not a worry. Uh, can you... Do you know the spell fabricate? Yes. That's what you asked. I know, but you answered like you didn't know about the spell. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, we, don't, we, we don't actually care how you make it. We just want you to make it. <laughs> Short um, answer, yeah. The Short answer, yes. The cost would be uh, a longsword. It's kind of in a style of a longsword. So you'd need... Uh, a longsword's four pounds, so you'd need approximately four pounds of platinum. There's 50 coins in a pound. So you need 200 platinum, platinum pieces. Cord. And then, but, you need, but, and then you need a 300 gold piece masterwork component if you were actually... Like, it's actually, like... It, a it's masterwork a, sword. But you wouldn't make a sword out of platinum unless yeah. it does what you just saw it do. Right. Yeah. So, um... So, so the question, can we make it cheaper if the inside is cheap? Is it whatever, like a, the, just the heavy yes, metal, I, as long I, as the I weight will, is the same? I will allow you to have the platinum cost by filling the insides with normal steel or iron or whatever. You, you're basically yeah. making a platinum-plated sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It's plating. It's quite simple, really much easier with a spell if i didn't have the spell you'd need two baths and you see what you do and uh, you, you notice you see agony and almadeus are now like within earshot of all you because you guys are getting excited about treasure and they're the two greediest <laughs> bastards in your party so, so they're just they're just, they're just listening <laughs> they're just listening to you make plans <laughs> so what we're going to do uh is um, I'm going to spend the rest of the time here as either a bat or a dog. I haven't been a dog for a while, so I'm going to just be a dog. Uh, it might be overrided. They smell a lot of ass, from what I understand. That's a good idea. Not as Go bad ahead as and fetch think. me the paper. It's good practice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I don't want to make bluff checks. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm not going to be around for that one. <laughs> I don't know if I still have the pathetic dog <laughs> picture that Sonny turns it to. Oh, I, I, I do. Okay, yeah. if you could send it to me in BC, also I could share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get my uh, my dog. It's been a while since I've been a dog. Dog is not the most powerful thing. No, but it's a. It's fun, and it also it'll give me an opportunity to sniff everyone. Um, I I don't have everybody sent. Come on. Come on! <laughs> <clears throat> it should be easy. Alright. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Uh, he's no see. I hit the, I hit X and try again. <clears throat> Interesting. Oh, I have to hit enter. <laughs> <laughs> why are you no load? I don't know why you no load. <laughs> Someone rolled a one on their used computers. <laughs> yeah. It's a stupid GURP system. I didn't yeah. put a rank in it, so I have a... <laughs> <It's laughs> a... There's, there's, there's Sunny Dog. <laughs> I don't know if it's uh, medium or small, but... Sunny dog. I could be a big dog. Well, no, we'll be a medium dog. We're we're big, big pushy. 
Uh, and I was going to take this opportunity to get sniffs of the parties just to get everyone. Okay. Um, but you, you get swatted at a couple times, but, but you, you end up successfully getting the smells of everyone. The constructs are really weird. It's like you smell the oils on their metal weapons and maybe like the smell of Cog's particular brew of strange oil potions and... Um, so you do get smells of all of them. They are creatures, so you they, they do have uh, individual scents. Brenos isn't there when you're doing the sniffing. Uh, Brenos, um, you know, while he's walking um, with Sildar and, and Thrawn, Thrawn insists on watch it walking ahead, and he's and he's like in his armor, and he he's he in his armor. And he's and... got his sword. He's yeah, yeah. yes. Might understand that you have interest in schooling the boy as a warrior. I. It is a. To learn something. It is not uncommon in these parts. It is not a path for great prestige, however, amongst men. No offense. There are many of those in the Imperium and even outside of Elsia, uh, even inside of Elsia Vale, that see that as beneath them. A kid can grow up weak like them or strong. They va the humans value and confidence more than anything else. That's the thing. The dwarves speak of an age when humans stood side by side with them, shield and sword in hand against hordes that were countless, where bravery won the day. Now humans hide behind their inventions, hide in their big cities. And while I forgot the old ways. Dwarves have long memories. Old Varric is my lord, and has been for most of my years. I hope you teach this boy well. I will put in a good word with his mother. He puts his hand, hand on his shoulder. Yep. <laughs> and will grant him that of glory. So he'll get a plus nine on his next charisma-based check. Base skill check. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. oh, come he on, also mom, goes like, please. I'm also pretty glorious, aren't I? <laughs> to go talk to the mom. <laughs> All right, so yeah, Sildar goes to uh, like Thuron's mom's house. It's just a house somewhere in uh, in uh, uh, Brindle. They, given that he was the guard captain, he probably has like a better house than average. And we're gonna say that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess you need a last name for him too. Under, it, it or it's going to be boy. He's going to be Thurum Boy. <laughs> you know, I added all the NPCs to the list Sorry. in the write-up about Brindle. So his name is uh, Theron Cartenix. Cartenix. Got a feeling it's boy. <laughs> <laughs> boy. <laughs> Or Lade. <laughs> All right, and then Cartenix home is there. Uh, yeah. So inside, Sildar approaches. Thrawn goes running. His mother embraces Thrawn, but then, uh, but then soon, um, smiles turn to tears as. Uh, uh, As she, as, as she seems to have to tell her boy that her uh, uh, that her husband and his father has died, uh, the boy already knows, and they 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 share a tender moment. Um, after a while, they realize they're being rude, invite you into the home, and by the grace and glory of the Morden salmon, I'm gonna get you to roll a charisma check uh, or a diplomacy check. Okay. As I like Diplomat. Um, Sildar is a ranger. They typically don't have max ranks in. 
charisma, but he's older. Okay, so he's got a plus 12. I don't know who's aiding whom here. Oh, well, I'll aid him. He gets a plus 9 from the glory. And then I will aid him with my glory for an additional plus 2. So he gets a plus 11. <laughs> okay, 35. Um, the boy speaks highly of, of uh, Brenos. Um, and Sildar is basically there to say that this is a wise choice for the lad and um you can pretty much take him as your squire now if you want to he he needs to grow into it and he needs proper training so it's either training here or training with the dwarves and then thinking with the dwarves <clears throat> so there, there is a place for him in in Overlook. He can join other lads who train there. Uh, how is they will put bricks on his shoulder to keep him from growing. <laughs> <laughs> it is your spine jacket. <laughs> oh, God. It would be like whole leg binding. I think for the yeah. dwarves. <laughs> femur binding. <laughs> End up looking like uh, Amadeus. <laughs> <laughs> and how is the uh, uh, how is the mother financially? Um, she their home looks fine. Uh, you 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 don't know what her finances will be like with her husband dead. You hope that they she'll have a pension because he was a like a guard captain. Do you also want to go to Overlook? Oh, my home is here. Doing what? <laughs> uh, she was a basket maker, I think. She makes baskets. That's She's a pretty a mobile em em employment. Pretty though. mobile profession. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, if you want to be with your kid. <laughs> it sounds like an excuse to get rid of the kid at this point. Oh, I no, can't no, go. You, I've got you, my you, basket you... weaving clients here. <laughs> well, <laughs> she, take them with you, this, though. This is her home, and... and uh, She's willing to send her kid off to go learn how to fight with dwarves, but she's not losing her kid. Like you're, like yeah. over over looks like seven days that way. It's like he'll <laughs> he'll come back. <laughs> Sending him to the city. Yep. Okay. Come uh, back at a movement rate of twenty after they break his legs. <laughs> you're moved too fast. Well, they just put him in heavy armor all the time. All the time. <laughs> so when he uh, takes the armor off, he's on a movement of forty. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Brenos is. Uh, what would be like annual expenses in a city like this for? Uh, so the annual expenses for. Um, give me a second. Um, there's a cost of living in here. Yeah, there's, have a, table there, for there's that. a cost of living. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm 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 on the ball when I'm tired. No, where are you, baby? Well, no more energy drinks for you then. <laughs> do, do two laps to stay up for three days before a game. Ten gold pieces a month is average. Wealthy is a hundred a month. Is that what it says? Uh, yeah. I'm so average. Ten gold pieces a month, so one hundred and twenty gold pieces a, a year would be an average home. She probably needs okay. less than that if she's just one person in a house. Okay, Brenos is going to put 120 gold pieces just on the table. Okay. As a, if, if you need it. Uh, he's just putting it down. I'm not buying her child. That is not the... No, no, <laughs> no. That's no. what, like, what it looks like to all outside observers. Yeah, the child sees a bunch of gold coins, goes running at it, and kind of jostles some of the stacks over it, is looking at it, but... You know, they don't seem. Yeah. She's not. She's not so desperate that she's. She's like running at the money. She. Yeah. She just gives you a solemn nod. When we when we head up to the fortress, we'll be back. Spend some time with your mom. Okay. Grieve for your father. Okay. Um, he tries to put on a tough face, but that that, that statement seems to break through whatever. Uh, buttress of brave face that he's put on, and uh, yeah, he he returns to his mother's side and holds her hand. Yeah. And we're gonna 
let them have a have a weep. Yep. Uh, Sil Sildar clasps your shoulder and just give you a look like you've done well. And um, I'm going to go speak to um, Lord Varak. He will probably want to know that you've returned. Um, I think the next step is for us to go to uh, Overlook. You're welcome to join. We'll need to head that way, I think. It's in the right direction. I'm sure Lord Varak will be very pleased with the news. I'll go break it to him now. If we need a contract, let me know. A contract for what? In aiding the, of the raising of the child while well, I'm following these human monkeys around. <laughs> hmm. Um, well, if, if the boy learns enough and is suitable, you will take him as your squire. The paperwork is very light. A declaration of Lord Varak can oversee such things. Don't worry about that. You've got friends who've been through it before. Yeah, we'll nod. I'm going to get a tuition bill at some point. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but you are right. This will bind the Cartenix family to that of yours, Brennos. And he thinks for a moment. Uh, of all these years that I've known you, I don't know if I know your clan name. Doesn't I have one? Mm. The bearded. <laughs> you should look into that. There are ways, I think. a temple orphan without a clan affiliation taking up the generic title of bearded so what you're like does that mean you're just like that's like smith yeah. yep <laughs> that would be the smith of the dwarven people <laughs> well, yeah i think it might even be like one. an elf called the pointed eared it might even, it might even be one worse it, it's like it's the yeah. name you'd adopt if you didn't know your clan it's like yeah. it's like a polite yeah. way of saying clanless um yeah it's not to say that there are not there are other clanless dwarves or dwarves that don't belong to very famous or or influential clans, but it's it's pretty low. Uh, Sildar is yep. saying that like you should solve that, maybe not quite knowing how you know the exact situation. Uh, he does go and check in with Lord Deverac, uh, leaving uh, leaving Brenos kind of standing in the street thinking about his past. <clears throat> All in all, not too bad of a week. <laughs> Could have been worse. <laughs> That's the prayer. <laughs> he only really gets to prayer in like in isolation. <laughs> he only gets to really pray in isolation. Um. <laughs> okay, for a brief moment, you thought you heard a dragon roar and your ear popped. When your ear popped, there was no noise, like... Knowledge religion was was Brenos part of the yes Brenos is part of the group that <laughs> we kind of met one we think uh twenty seven mm -hmm. what's the question which of tomorrow I am praying to the god who's most likely to have kicked a dragon in the teeth or been friends with dragons I don't know which of, like Adam doesn't know which of the Morden Summit is the most likely to deal with dragons ah. Uh. Because he gets talked to tomorrow. <laughs> because, uh, well, and uh, does like, does does Brennos know? So this is a knowledge religion. Yes. The vast majority of the Mordin salmon, or the dwarven gods, are lawful good. I believe. They're, yeah, they're they're dominantly good, and they sort of are lawful, lawful neutral. Some so there, yeah. there's likely lawful good dragons that may have be, be like servants of some of these servants people. of or befriended the Mornden salmon. Uh, right. You also know that 
so that you were in the context of dwarves. Okay, so yes, there there might be other dragons out there that are morally compatible and friendly to the dwarves. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You also suspect that there are dragons of greed that would be morally compatible what? with a Bathor. So you're you're kind of left at like, well, it, it's almost like pick one. Any of the ones that are like greed or mining and gemstones and that sort of stuff. Okay, you, you, uh, you play with your ear a bit and yeah, you shake your yeah. head and you you, mm -hmm. you kind of wander away thinking about things. Yeah. Okay. All right. You re you return and you can see. I don't know. A dog sniffs your <laughs> sniffs your crotch and then runs away. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I hear you, man. <laughs> the, the party seems it seems to be moving amongst the party, suggesting that the the party knows the dog or doesn't see it as a threat. I mean, fine, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but. I, Probably like that. Yeah. Barnabas, you wrote down the amount of money in that contract you get per the for the prisoners, Mark. I believe it was five hundred gold pieces a head. Okay. You're muted, Mark. Five hundred a head, and like, uh, and uh, a bonus for getting all of them. A bonus for getting all of them, equaling five thousand. The total being 5,000. Total it. being 5,000 okay. with the bonus. All right. So, uh, and then was there a reward for each of the relics or? No, they just asked us to find them. Okay. Which we did. We'll now, the cost trap. for transportation for those items, that's... that's... <laughs> All right. So, what's the order of operations? <laughs> Are you trying to make the... Uh... Well, well, we'll get our initial fee first. Okay. So Barnabas goes and fetches and goes to the um, uh, goes to the Brindle Keep. Um, you do talk to the mayor, uh, and he has runners go and verify that everyone has returned. Uh, and he does pay you the five thousand gold pieces for um, uh, for returning everyone. Well, it's good to see brave people uh, come to these parts these days. Uh, dwarves don't have a monopoly on bravery. Yeah, well. Yeah, you need heroes, we're heroes, we won't. Oh, uh, so Tanya and uh, the uh, caretaker of the Hall of Great Valor was in here all uh, a fuss about um, about the artifacts that yeah, were stolen. Great pain in the ass, that one. <laughs> yes, but he is yes. the, he is the um, local sage of sorts. Uh, he knows a lot about the genealogies and history of this place. So. Uh, it's not too difficult. Too much no, education it? can fill a man's head and it fills up like a balloon. It becomes full of himself. You need can it now? <laughs> you need practical experience in the field before you could sit back in your great chair and comment upon the passings of the world with experience at your back. Yeah, sure. I served in the military. <laughs> it's like so obvious he still wears the clothes. Achieve the rank of colonel. I didn't achieve that lofty rank by being a fool. No, oh, I imagine noble title had something to do with it too. <laughs> or did you start out as a private? Of course not. Yeah. The Imperium still recognizes that nobility carries a weight. Of course it does. What did you say your last name was? Darby. Uh. Foundry, huh? Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, the great cities. Too much mingling of noble blood with lesser classes. Well, it does help prevent the inbreeding, you know. <laughs> I've seen an inbred. I've seen an inbred officer or two in my day. He goes. He at this point <laughs> in the conversation, he veers for the cart where the alcohol is and pours himself a drink. <laughs> Bar Barnabas. Barnabas is not trying to persuade him from that course of action. <laughs> All right. Well, he, he he pours you a drink. The the whiskey is good. Well, you're pretty sure it's a dwarvish whiskey. Um, this particular whiskey has a lot of peat in it. Um, as FYI, Marty hates peat whiskey. <laughs> so he just like I'm chewing on. I, I, I'm I'm licking a tire right now. Mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know if Barnabas is a, is a fan of peaty scotch, he, but... He, he's not actually a fan of whiskey, though. Oh, okay. Is he, like a, is he a bourbon guy? No, he drinks whiskey. He's not a fan of it. All right, so <laughs> so he, he you sniff at it, and it, it's it's like, oh, it's dwarven. Uh, okay. Lightness, with, at least with alcohol with him, he understands. <laughs> it's like he, someone he, offers he, you. He a doesn't drink. pour you a second one. He pours himself a second one and sits That's down. Fine. Sits down in his chair behind a desk. So I expect you to return what um, Satanian is um, uh, is missing from the Great Hall of Valor. We wouldn't want um, our new relationship marred by, well as some might interpret theft from the people of Brindle. Well, actually, it was theft from hobgoblins. However, I do understand what you're saying. And it will absolutely all be returned as soon as our transportation fees are taken care of. Transportation fees? Oh, yeah. Uh, transporting all them goods from... A, a war zone, basically, uh, to your town. He looks at you. He does not look pleased. I just gave you five thousand gold coins. Could have otherwise been put to good use. Yes, yes, you did. And as I told you, when we accepted the contract, five thousand is fucking charity from this group. Business. What sort of transportation fee were you? Did you have in mind? Oh, talent should cover it. A talent. Yeah, for what we found, yeah. Some of us right fucking heavy. I could put you up on charges of illegal battlefield looting. Yeah, you could try. But are you going to do that for a thousand gold pieces? I don't think you are. He picks a piece of paper that you get a quick look at, you know, before he, like, puts it up to his face. It's it's a list of the things. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few items on here. Fine. A thousand, a thousand gold coins. Wonderful. Thank you very much for the drink. We will, uh... He, he actually opens up a drawer and, and sifts around and tosses ten bags, which you assume have a hundred gold coins in it. Mm -hmm. He Clo takes those coins and drops them into his hat. Yep. <laughs> he, he, note, he notes where they're disappearing. He's, he's already gotten up from his chair and wandered back to where the alcohol is. This time he just grabs the grabs the fancy decanter that is canting the alcohol. Well, thank you, Colonel. You're dismissed. He <laughs> says. It's been a pleasure doing business. If ever uh, you require heroics again, do uh, keep the Steel Rose Expeditionary League in mind. <laughs> I have to raise taxes first. Oh, uh, that's what it takes. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's muttering to himself about robbery <laughs> when you when you leave his office. Uh, 
You can tell Satanian that we will return the found items uh, forthwith okay. to the uh, Hall of Valor. You get the sense that he's not going to tell Satanian anything. Hmm. Okay. He'll probably um, send someone to go check, but uh, as yeah. as he sent somebody to go check to make sure everyone was okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's yeah. He Barnabas didn't actually expect him to personally go do it. No. And uh, Barnabas will uh, make himself comfortable at the uh, Brindle Gentleman's <laughs> Club again. <laughs> You see, I got room available. <laughs> you have a house. You're too good for the barn. <laughs> He's too good for the barn. Back at the barn, what do you? So you guys have a. You've concocted a plan. What is? What is the execution of said plan? No, oh, yeah, we gotta talk about the plan. All right, barn must go back for the plan. Still booking a room on the way in. Though. Mm-hmm. The dog is sitting there. You... <laughs> Uh, Thogram apparently nodded off <laughs> with his spellbook open. Huh? Too many. All right, you're getting kicked by a very large dog. <laughs> very old, very old, large dog. Oh, uh, yes, Bonnet. What is it, Bonnie? What is it, boy? Big, uh, big salivating jowls. <laughs> and a nice your, old your man breath. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're diseased? Oh, I get it. That's all right. Uh, he's, kicking at, he's, he's kicking at the pile of coins at your feet. Yeah, what do you want? Oh, he's... he's, he's... You want me to count them? Except the bag of coins. Are they... Platinum coins. <laughs> Do we have any platinum coins? Our, our, our money has always been described as in just in gold pieces. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's fixed or... Let's check and see if we have any platinum coins in our treasure pile. Yeah, yeah. so um, you just got paid six, the equivalent of 6,000 gold pieces. I, c- I can roll what percentage of that is in... Uh, Could... Uh, Barnabas have asked. Oh, it's too late. Forget it. <laughs> so if I was him, after those certain rates, I would pay you in coppers. <laughs> <laughs> so we're being a dick now, are we? All right, fine. <laughs> Takes one to know one. <laughs> like it's more of the dicks. <laughs> so you you have seventy platinum coins with as part of that money, and I can I can divide that if you want. So you got 70 PP, and I'll subtract the 700 from the pile. Cool. So that's almost enough. Almost enough. You could spend an hour in money change, and like you go around to some businesses, including yeah. the, uh, the the magic shop. The magic well, we'll shop. Magic shop. Yeah, you're a, you're able to, you're able to uh, get enough coin. You needed what 200 platinum? I said. Yeah. So, uh, or half if we were gonna use no, a sword. I, I, yeah. So, so we need thirty. Okay. So I'll take off three hundred gold, and you've got a hundred platinum pieces, and then they charge you, I don't know, five gold for the the exchange. Exchange. Yeah. Sure. We're not gonna argue. Okay. So you've got a hundred okay. platinum pieces, which is enough, and then you're you can spend an hour on the market buying the masterwork component. So I just yep. subtracted. Uh, oops. Uh, another 300 gold from your okay. now, piles. Dog wants to see the fabricate. Dog's kicking at the coins. Kicking at the, the, the dwarf wizard who fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pick up. The, I don't know what you want me to do. With the coins. <laughs> <Pick up> the <laughs> coins. Are we? Just me to do it now. What's it? What? what is, uh, they are Shisha. expecting. They're, ex- they're expecting the, the the things back. Learn the proper feature, Mutt. <laughs> now, <laughs> the Lord seemed to have a list of things he expected returned. Now, why would he have a list of things he expected returned? Possibly from the old. Oh wait, no, I was there. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't. I speak many languages, Sonny. Dog is not one of them. <laughs> no scratching behind his ear. <laughs> All right. If you do, if you do know, do you know? Can you, can you not? Uh, Just turn into a human and speak. <laughs> Sonny is in a weird position. Is this your true form? Are you stuck? When he turns back into Sonny. Having a lay down. Uh, um, He might have seen some of them. Uh, Why would he have seen some of them? He's a nosy old man. Do we know what he's seen? He couldn't get through it. He didn't see the souls, for example. He did okay. see the he did see the tabard. He saw okay, tabards, fuck the tabards, they're fucking garbage, they're fucking racks, they can have the fucking tabards. What about the shields? I don't believe so. Besides, there was bits of shield. We have shields. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, you also he saw the helmet. Uh, the hel- yeah, he did see, he also yeah. saw the helmet. It's It'll help you against the dragon's breath, but there are very few dragons now. That is a fact. All right, so we will turn the helm. We will return the helm. We'll return the rags. Besides, the hat's very impractical. Yeah, it's like walking the forest with those on your head. Yeah, it looks rather ostentatious for my taste. (laughs) Turn the helm, the rags. Or not a uh... and we make them in the in the, the sword. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll return the sword. <laughs> <Yeah>. Got it. <laughs> um, why aren't you making the sword? <laughs> Sorry, it's just like why be. why don't. <laughs> you better be quiet because you're busy concentrating on your sword making <laughs> so is the shield magical or not uh not anymore I don't know if it ever was mm. do I need it because I got lots of shields do you want one with your family crest on it yeah alright you done with it yeah, we're done. It's yours to do it as you please. Okay, he packs. Of course, away. if you don't want it, we could always return it. And that's an extra thing we brought back. Right? So when we find the library, yeah, we'll get to the library. I think I know of a spell that would allow us to follow Snake around and fix the things he broke in the crystal. I heard you say my name. You better not be planning any magic shit. He walks away with his shield, and you can Sunny. see you can see him lashing the tower shield to the other tower shield that he carries as spare tower shields to the mithril tower shield that he has out in combat. <laughs> God, I could build a fucking hut with his shields. <laughs> if if he understood the utility of magic, but if you were to explain it to him, maybe he would. I've tried to explain that without magic, he would not exist. He doesn't care. But I think that might be the heart of the problem. He blames the magic for his existence. I, I agree with this plan. If this sword is special, we should take it for ourselves. Yes, and we should also stop discussing it until we're out of fucking town. he nods. <laughs> He just wanted to let you know that Team Greed approves. Team Greed, is on board. <laughs> Team Greed approves of this plan. <laughs> My suggestion is, why don't we just give them the real thing? And then uh, earlier, I leave. Pictured, earlier I pictured Brenos walking away, heartfelt scene, mother-son reunited, son's gonna go back, yeah, we did the right thing. 
skip to the other party dancing with joy as they plan on stealing from the town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are some loose morals uh, here. Um, uh, this, this is this is our maybe quote. Chronos uh, is neutral. But he has a code. Yeah. You just have to. This is my. This is mine. <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> after of... after taking a little bit of a break, though, Grim, uh, we'll say that you guys spend the night here and rest, recover your spells. But that yeah. next morning, you know, Barnabas is actually there early enough with like a breakfast in a bowl, like he's eating, waiting for you to create this thing. Sunny is waiting for you. <laughs> like, are you gonna cast the spell? I wonder if it's broken. <laughs> yep. Agony steps in front of the barn door so you can't leave without casting the spell. Like, like the party's like, do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> I was going to do it at night. It's, it's morning now. It was night before. <laughs> you had your opportunity to do it at now. I now have it's a bunch of it, but These the night is don't... already gone. I can't bring it back. <laughs> right. So, okay. Sorry. Fabricate. <laughs> Oh, I can't cast. No, I'm kidding. Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> the the right. area of effect is up to ten cubic feet per level. The sword is much. The sword and the components are much smaller than that. Um, one round. It takes one round to cast, and you make a craft check. Do you have craft weapons as yeah. a, a skill? Okay, give we're, me. We're a... working with a mineral, so it's one cubic foot per level, but that's a massive amount of metal. Yeah. Yeah. Craft. Oh, weapon. oh yeah, sure. Sorry. One cubic yeah. foot, but it's... Uh, and then um, Thogrim, what's your craft uh, skill check? Twenty four. Oh, he's gonna get get a, a crafter's. Uh, he's gonna drink a crafter's uh, fortune. fortune. Okay. Yeah. Do uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Cog is gonna provide that. Okay, so Cog, I don't have it. Cog mixed a potion the next round. Apparently, the elf is also in on the. Um, Stealing the, the, the platinum sword. Liberating from the boobs who don't even know it's magical. That yep. or it's an artifact that protects the town from some sort of evil thing we don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as we leave, they're overrun by a dragon. Because we actually don't know what it does. <laughs> we might be fire does, does anyone bring this this thought up? Or Sonny's, Sonny's actually, because you said it, Adam, the thought pops into Sonny's head. I don't how you react to it is is fine, but geographer could have a word with you. <laughs> yes, we don't quite know what it does. No, no, it's an artifact. It's a bit more difficult to identify, isn't it? it? What if it's protecting the town from some sort of like oogie boogie? Knowledge, history, town of Brindle, <laughs> sugar. Sure. Uh, forty. What, no, what was the question? Like you're just saying. Um, I know about is there the is history. there a history like the town was is, is there like a beset by monsters and plague <laughs> until the magical sword arrived? Or... Well, yeah, a hundred years ago they stopped the red hand of doom at their gate at at their city walls and gates, and this is an artifact from that defense of the city, carried by some. Dragon man. Uh, by some dragon man who worshipped Bahamut. Yeah, now it was the dragon man who did the killing, not the soul. We're good. <laughs> we could, I could just bury it and then we could come back and get it. Just be, just... Or we could not risk losing it and just keep it. Okay, so Thogrim drinks the potion of Crafter's Fortune and casts the Fabricate spell. Give me your craft check. This is, well, you guys are off to the side deliberating. Uh, the dwarf yeah, yeah. is... It's a plus five, right? Yep. Yeah. Look at him go. It took him a long time to uh, meditate. 40, 45. Okay, so you craft Holy a shit. DC 45 forgery of the, uh, of the <clears throat> ornate platinum blade that you plucked from the Riven Roar ruins that once and for the last hundred years have, has collected dust on the walls of the Halls of Great Valor. <laughs> Actually, in a in a glass case, it was in a glass case for the last hundred years. Um, all right, you've got you've got two of them now. Okay, oh, let's shit. not mix them up because they're fucking identical. <laughs> yeah, you come back and there's this brilliant blade, and, and you're like, which one? And 
Cog just taps the one that's how's, real. How's that? Uh, it's fucking well done, well done. Uh, wrap the copy in the banners that we're going to return. Okay. The one with the banners on it is the one we give away. <laughs> this one goes very deep into our things. Who is carrying the blade? Lenny is turning into a dog and going back into stealth mode. <laughs> uh, well, he sits there and I have a bag of holding. <laughs> no, it's, can, well, yeah. I can put it in my bag of holding. Sure. Uh, hold on. Is we going to pierce right through or some shit? <laughs> like, uh, and the balling balls so, come rolling out of the bottom. Uh, Brad also help pack the stuff. Okay. Uh, he is interested in weapons and those sorts of things. So we'll we'll stoosh it away. We need to find a priest of Bahamut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brennus is taking the the real yeah. sword. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Brent, you're yeah, carrying the real. Brennus doesn't lie for beans. <clears throat> He's not going to return to. to... Um, where are you gonna put that? Find it. Let's put it away until we're out of town. Yeah, yes. That let's just hide it for now. Oh, you... These idiots are not using it. Might as well be a picture. Let's hide it. We don't want to raise any issues. Yeah. Do you want to be slicing downtown, God? Is that what you want? So what I was saying, he was putting it in the stuff. It's being put in, if you're. Either being put in a hat or because because like... what I imagined you doing was like it, we're we're putting it in. <laughs> yeah. What I said when he's hiding it in the things. Okay, I. Yeah. We're putting it in um, Thogram's bag of holding, but you were concerned about it piercing something or something. I don't know. Fucking well, artifact. Don't know what it does <laughs> as, as an artifact. Okay, so. so who's picking it up to put it in Thogram's bag? <laughs> Right now, it sounds like you picked it up. So you've got the sword in so your Thogram, hand. Thogram will pick it up. And... Then he Thogram takes it from your hand. Brenos yeah. likes weapons. You know that he picks up weapons and uses them all the time. So, yep. yeah, you watch it go into the bag. It disappears like other things you've seen <laughs> disappear into the bag. Uh, Thogram, Thogram, Thogram like sticking it, his hands like, is it there still? <laughs> you, you put your hand back in and you think about the blade and you summon the blade back and you pull it out. You're like, yeah, right. it's still there and put it back in. <clears throat> cool. Okay. The blade is douche. Mark it on your character sheet. You can, call uh, it, you can call it the ceremonial platinum sword. And I'll, I'll remove that from your... Well, actually, I'll just put fake beside the one that you, you've got out in the open. What are you doing with the masterwork heavy darkwood shield with the druidic symbol of, uh, of Eth on it? The so I, have, the, I have another the spell. The clawed here. gauntlet of wounding... <laughs> Clawed gauntlet, gauntlet of wounding and the and the broken platinum shield in that the magic's broken but the shield is put back together. Yeah, the I think they're getting the clawed gauntlet. Yeah, the wounding. They're getting the the helm. They're getting the tabards. I think we're keeping the shields. We're keeping the shields. Oh, you're gonna give back the wounding gauntlet? Okay. Yeah. If we give back, it's one of those things. You give back enough, and they'll be like, "Okay, they must not have found the <laughs> broken shield bits." Didn't make the adventurer's yep. threshold of maybe the hobgoblins get rid of them or whatever. All right, who's bringing the stuff back to Sertanian? Barnabas is taking the lead on this one. All right, is Barnabas going alone? No, he'll take Eamon with him. Uh, if anyone else wants to come, that's fine too. Nope. <laughs> The rest of you can't lie for shit. Fucking stay around the corner. <laughs> All right, so Eamon carries the stuff, and, Bar and Barnabas, <laughs> Barnabas goes ahead. Um, you can hear people cleaning up, like, broken glass, and... Uh, um, oh, will you stop complaining? Yes, yes, yes. You can hear the two of them arguing in the hall. 
Uh, you walk in. Ah, there he is. It's about time. Uh, the woman nods to Barnabas, but kind of retreats from the encounter that she doesn't need to be a diviner to... Um, um, Where do you want this? To know that it will go, perhaps, not smoothly. Uh, you, you brought back the relics? Show me! Is, is there a table or something? Yeah, he comes running forward, and he comes, like, running forward so quickly towards you that Eamon actually puts out his hand and, like, keeps him from bumping into you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a... A dick move is a table he just throws on the floor. <laughs> Eamon then un- puts the bundle down on the on, on the table and is holding Sertanian back from touching it. He's he's like letting Barnabas do this. Uh he he's a little frightened now that he like he did not expect to be manhandled by the fiendish warrior. Oh. But he's looking old... he's looking yeah. at the table. Now you have your uh, ceremonial platinum swords, your uh... tethered... Thank the gods! You found it! You found it! Uh, I don't know what I would have done if that had gone missing. And he he carefully scoops it up, and uh, he he looks to you as he's moving away. Eamon just it. lets him lets him go, and he goes back over to the um, case uh, to the bottom part of the case, which has a felt. Um, an indented felt uh, place for the sword, and he puts the sword back into its its spot, even though the glass has all been broken. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we have your tabards, your gruesome clothing. He's actually like 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 catching his breath, and he he, he seemed really interested in the sword. Anyway, that's um. Hey, wait, wait! You say he he comes back. Uh. uh... Oh, the helmet. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, uh, oh and you found the clawed gauntlet of the, uh, uh, of, of the, uh, l- l- uh, lieutenant, the general of the, of the horde. Yes, yes. And two of the battle standards. And uh, you didn't happen to find any broken pieces of shields, did you? I suppose in, in a goblin den, broken weapons might have looked like, well, just broken weapons, but they were very uh, there important. There were quite a shields. few broken sheets. It's entirely possible it was missed by some of my companions. You just mistook it for. You well, said you overturned every every nook and cranny in that place. You should have known yeah, better. And they found broken shields. What you fucking want? They're not historians. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to go out there. Maybe I'll have to pay for adventures to go out there. Uh, give me a bluff check to see if he believes your All right. Your uh, story. Hang on a sec. Uh, that's 10th level Barnabas. Much better liar than 9th level Barnabas. Give it a second here. I'll go back to the... That that's when the uh, skill feats kick in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what that's that's what happened there. Uh, hang on, I'm just gonna. This is why I kept the uh, ninth level version in case. There we go, ninth level Barnabas. Uh, you you crappy liar with only a plus thirty three. A plus thirty three. Forty seven. <laughs> it's a reasonable story. A bunch of broken weapons that weren't magical. You didn't pick them up. Now, if you are looking for people to go look for them, here is our card. <laughs> <laughs> he holds the card and, and he just looks mad. He slides it into the folds of his robe and... and uh, if that is all. If you... uh, that is all. Our transportation things have been covered, so... Uh... Huh? Oh, nothing, nothing. He waves you off. If you do find at the bottom of your backpacks a uh, uh, shield fragments, you do return them to me. I'll be able to... I, I have gazed upon these things since I was a boy. I know them like the back of my own hand. No. All right. Well, you let me know if... Uh, we'll let you know if we uh, find any garbage in our backpacks. It's not all... Garbage? Usual. Rubbish! Oh well, yeah, rubbish. Garbage. Same thing. <laughs> Get out of here. I have much to do. Uh, clearly, it's been fucking five days. This place is still a mess. Pick up your socks a bit, man. <laughs> he, he, he comes following 
as you're leaving, he follows at a pace, keeping his distance, but then slams the door behind you. I hope that was satisfying. Do you want me to kill him? No, I don't want... Why? <laughs> the old man doesn't know his place, that is why. Yes, so we irritate him and make his life miserable. <laughs> You think I honestly care what that little fucking peon thinks? <laughs> he just shrugs. The wolf does not care about the opinions of the sheep. <laughs> Let he, us be gone. He, he does that mean we're supposed to eat him? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, he accepts. He accepts your uh, your explanation. Um, okay, so I'm going to kind of snap into downtime mode here. Uh, I will ask a couple of clarifying questions, but... Uh, si, senor. The party needs training, right? Yes. To up their level, and you are I up... need a library to learn greater make whole yes. so I can make this shield awesome. <laughs> So, uh, following yeah. the attack on Brindle and the rescue at Ribbon Roar, the party reconvenes at Brindle for a short rest before traveling to the city of Overlook. Accompanying you is Lord Clegor de Verac and his retinue, including Sir Defron, Sildar, his cat Clarg, Gundren Rockseeker, and apparently the boy uh, Theron. And boy. And boy. <laughs> Uh, and I've got some tokens representing their bit of their caravan. <laughs> Arranging, like, who's in what, uh, who's in what conveyance. Uh, not forget that I'm got, I'm still carrying those two big plates. Yep. The moles. Yes. Um, they they can go on to I think the iron coach was strong enough to hold yeah. the the mm -hmm. two plates uh, uh, in the baggage compartment on the top. Um, Lord de Verac is very impressed with the Steel Rose Expeditionary League, and seems very happy to be traveling with you. I should be. <laughs> Just say this all. Well, yeah. <laughs> Before we leave Brindle, are there any final pieces of business that you have in the town? Um, did we get to sell everything here? And you have not did... spent weeks and weeks selling. No, your, your we're going to go to a big market for that. Uh, okay, checking in, in on, blah, 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 checking in on Jalissa before leaving. Okay. So, um, Brannos does that. All right. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. Thogrim's going to go and visit, um, uh, what's his name? The Alchemist. Uh, uh Barnabas will go see Jalissa as well. All right. So Not the, really about, out of concern, but. How about, how about the three of you go for a walk and Eamon just we, follows we'll, in behind? We, we will, we will talk to Jalissa and then we'll follow up by going to the Alchemist shop to see how things are going. Barnabas can use a laugh. He'd like to see that, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you traverse to the Moondust Temple, and you do see that, well, this must be where elves congregate in Brindle, because you notice uh, several elves. Uh, you could tell that they're a little bit on the younger side of adult, like young adult. They are in priestly robes. It does not look like they've seen a hard day's work in their lives, um, kind of spindly. Uh, but you do see that they are tending to um, uh, 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 Jalissa's wounds. Like, like she is not in the main. Up. She's not in the main temple area. The main temple area has a big open part of the roof, like a uh, uh, like a uh, sun well, uh, perhaps to watch celestial uh, events in the sky, uh, which is she's over top of a. Six weeks from getting all of her levels back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. awful. <laughs> uh, you'll be done your downtime and she'll still be <laughs> like, convalescing. Kick, kicking back, trying to restore her her, uh, her soul wounds. Um, 
the, the temple is beautiful inside. Uh, the stonework has sort of like a glittery uh, grain to it, so that every 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 movement there are different facets of the uh, of the stonework that uh, that that shine almost like moon dust in the temple name. Uh, there are statues um, uh, of made from graceful stone, more graceful than that of um, like Greek statues, but of elven deities that line small alcoves along along the edge of the temple. Uh, immediately, Brenos, because he is a pantheon worshiper, uh, recognizes that this holy ground represents the pantheon of the Selvarine, the uh, uh, Another family of gods of, of a different type. Uh, so you go and see Jalissa. Ah, oh, my saviors. She is lying in a uh, beautiful bed. She is in like a, um, a nightgown. Um, she's kind of propped up in the bed like she still has to perhaps do services. There are elven, uh, elven underpriests that are, are fussing, uh, fussing about her. She, you, you don't quite see her uh, quite clearly because there is a gossamer um, uh, like sheet that is around the belt, uh, like like mosquito netting almost, but more like silk, uh, and you can see her silhouette and not quite her form clearly. Just come to see that you're doing all right, and things are getting on. By the grace of Sehenin Moonbow, I will recover from my wounds. I thank you for bringing me from that place. I also thank you for helping me find this artifact. My... The grace of the Seldarine, it would have been such a loss. Especially to grubby hands of, co of, of hobgoblins and goblin filth. It happened before, Brenos. I was young then, but it happened before. The goblins are not very disciplined. And when you gather a great number of goblins in one place, just like any force, you have to feed them. And how do they feed? They run amok, looting, pillaging, scourging the land. The rise in goblin activity can only mean one thing. They're invading. What to put a stop to that then? I pray to the uh, pray to the elven gods that I am well enough should I be needed upon these <laughs> upon these walls like sisters and brothers before me. I have a favor to ask. She nods. The boy is coming with us to Fortress Top to learn to fight. Keep an don't eye on worry, his brother. You don't need to look after him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that Barnabas was there. Skulking in the shadows, are you? Oh, it's my favorite place. Keeps me out of the sun. Uh, Eamon didn't come into this time. No, I didn't think he did. <laughs> <laughs> <There> was... <laughs> uh, this day, uh, as, uh, Brenos is worshipping Burgadin, because lucky travel is probably a good way to, to go down the roads. <laughs> yep. Fine choice. <laughs> Things bode ill. I will check in on his mother. I will make an, ex an excuse to buy many baskets, she says. If there's any problems, you can let me know. Try it anyway. You could do that with a sanding spell. She knows her, she knows her <laughs> magic. <laughs> Doom. <laughs> I know you're tired, that's all. You know, you're recovering. It's been, it was a trying time for you. May I have a bit of your beard? Uh, yeah, Brynos will cut off, uh, basically, a, one of the, the braided tails at a, like yep. a pretty good, a pretty good hunk. Okay, she, you were about to pass it to her, and one of the, one of the other priests comes over with a, uh, with a clean cloth and opens it up and, you know, 
takes it from they're, you. And... They're doing that because you're extremely dirty. Uh, the 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 elf looks away like ashamed for like insulting you, uh, but he, uh, he does present he does present it to the lady, and she just kind of like waves to like put it on the table, and he puts it down. I have a bad charisma. Sorry. The the the, the elf the elf the elf is now refusing to look at Brenos and Thogram in their faces. Uh, he's, huh. he's it's turning it's turning a plum shaped uh, a plum a no, plum don't... color in in its cheeks. Uh, it, you just don't worry. Touch. I wouldn't touch his beard myself. It, it's something else. You know, there's an option called shut your pie hole. It's a thing you could do. Okay. Uh, I can prestigitate your face if you like. It's work. My face is fine. <laughs> the young, highly embarrassed elf excuses himself from, from the presence of the party and his, uh, and his mistress and, and toodles off. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> She's sick. Don't touch her. <laughs> We'll be making our way to Fortress Top and try to find a way to head off the scourge. Fortress Top? Uh, did I? Sorry, I think I just... Overlook. Overlook. I heard, Overlook. I heard the derp. I'm not trying to take us to a different place. <laughs> <laughs> Overlook. <laughs> not a Fortress Top. Overlook. <laughs> she nods. Uh, figure out what's going on with the drones. I am still in your debt, Brennus, she says in, in dwarf, dwarven, looking after a human, <laughs> looking after a human in this way will not cover it. Oh, we've got long memories, don't we? Lots of time. Okay. Can you fix my finger? <laughs> <laughs> Suck it up. <laughs> it's about you, isn't it? Me, me, me. <laughs> Brennos leaves with the finger tuck. <laughs> she shakes her, her head no. Let me just check Brindle for a second. Do they have seventh circle spells? Or do they have druid fourth circle spells? <laughs> they have sixth. Uh, she says... You'll need to go to Overlook for that. Yeah. See. Oh, well, we yeah, take this anyway. Uh, call it a charitable donation to the needy of uh, Brindle after the attack. We'll leave it to you to dispense as you see fit. He hands the uh, transportation fee over oh, to her. Look at the how. Oh, the, there's the, a heart the, of the, like, th the thousand, silver inside the thousand there gold pieces. Okay. Plus, yeah, you yeah. don't have to recalculate her shares now. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay, so um, you, there is a nod from from her bed, and she doesn't she doesn't say anything else. Uh, Brandos looks at you. There's look like a quiver. There's a twitch. Then he like, then he leaves. <laughs> May the grace of this. <laughs> May the grace of the Seldoreen uh, be upon you. And if I'm uh, not if I'm not mistaken, Brenos, your accent is that of the Divine Knot, is it not? Aye. District of the Nine Bells. Aye. District of the Nine Bells is the poorer part of town. It's not quite shanty town in in Overlook, but it's nine churches. But there's a lot of poor folk in that neighborhood. I got news for you, Brynos. Barnabas has led that life already, living in the slums. He's not going back. <laughs> <laughs> um, she says, let them know that I sent you should you visit the Temple of the Seldarine in the sh If my favor needs to be cashed in there, and she's speaking in Dwarven, so it's kind of like all about money and honor. Um, <laughs> then so be it. Uh, you know the Shrine of the Thousand One Fey Gods? That place is nuts. Uh, um, it's just sort of like an open shrine where Fey show up and sometimes they're, they're mean, sometimes...